Hey everyone, it's Stefoni here. Today's rambling about is on the Rossum Electro Assimilator. To use a scientific term, I would say the assimilator is the big kahuna of Eurorack samplers. It's made by Dave Rossum of Emu, of the infamous SP12 and SP1200. Uh, basically, you're a legend coming into the Eurorack realm to impart the next sampler in a long line of very very famous samplers to us in the assimilator well here's two disclaimers for you i'm once again borrowing this from our euro pal marius who was very very kind to lend this to me uh i have no affiliation with rossum i am just borrowing this module and this series isn't sponsored or anything it's just my own thoughts my own ramblings and second i'm could never hope to cover every single item on here. I don't think I'm even going to try and touch the phase modulation stuff today. It is very much an important part, or uh, Rossum feels it's a very important part of uh, what makes this sampler unique, but I'm probably not going to be able to cover that today. I am learning and diving into this module for the first time, and we are going to experience that together. And what I'm hoping to do today is just give you an idea of like what the workflow is like. And if you're looking at your rack samplers, as I have done many times, and I have owned many of them, um, and not been happy with a lot of them, uh, I'm hoping this video can kind of let you see what the workflow is like and if that meshes with you or not. So more importantly than all that, it sounds like this. Let's go over the panel. So for me in your rack samplers, I don't do a lot of live sampling or live looping either. I guess you can do live looping with samplers for sure. Uh, but there's a lot of focus on that in here that I may skim over. Uh, but I'm just going to say first off, the first thing that they list in the manual is the inputs. So they're stereo inputs, which is a big uh, plus over other Eurorack samplers. And I'd say, like, if I haven't mentioned it or if I don't mention it enough, uh, everything in the assimilator is, like, they don't cut any corners. And what I mean by that is, like, the file sizes are huge. The sample rate is huge. Uh, there's uh, stereo for everything, where a lot of Eurorack samplers, including the squid sample, which I recently did the video on, maybe you're coming from that one, uh, a lot of mono, mono sampling in, uh, assimilator stereo sampling in. Uh, now, I do think, and do correct me if I'm wrong here, when I'm loading up the included presets, stereo samples take up two channels. And there's lots of cool independent control you can do over the different channels, and I think this all sort of flows into the phase modulation stuff that's on board here. But I think there's no way to have a stereo sample just take up one channel. And if that's wrong, let me know. Let's try and just quickly, before I get into going over the panel, I'm gonna derail myself here by loading up a sample that is that way. So I'll talk about the sample structure in a minute, but you see the included sample that comes with the assimilator on the SD card is this DivKid drones. And it, you see, there, there's the first two channels are one stereo sample, the next two are another, uh, the following two, and so on. They all take up two s channels. So if you click on channels, you'll see the same. There's the master and the stereo right channel. Now these can do their own things, and you can like, I believe I'm this, just to give an example, and this may not be the case specifically, but I think you could like bit crush, bit reduce 
the right channel and not the left. There's a lot of power in that. But I do feel it's kind of weird to like, yeah, here I am changing the sample by accident. Um, yeah, see, I did do that. Uh, I do think it's kind of weird that they do take up two, and I don't know if that's a memory limitation that they just like had to do that that way, but it feels a little strange to me because if I want to do CV over a stereo sample, I need to do it over two. And all of the CV is independently assignable, so you could do it. But it's just like, yeah, that's something to consider if I'm accurate in that or if I'm just confused. And if I'm just confused, maybe it's a workflow kink that I want to point out. So uh, everything on the assimilator is probably possible. So that's the other thing. Like like I said, there's no corners cut. It's like I there's no – you name me a Eurorack sampler that – goes further than the assimilator and i don't like it's the big kahuna like i said i don't think it <laughs> goes any further than this right so yeah let's get back to going over the panel before i do the uh before we front load all the rambling about so uh first i said stereo inputs i think you could independently do two mono inputs uh like i said in the squid sample video there is cv sampling in this one obviously uh, it's super high res. It can sample CV. And there's one of the uh, preset packs. Sorry, I'm load is what I want to grab. There is uh, LFOs and CV on here. And I think that's kind of an interesting, like, thing to, like, of, like, not using an LFO module, just, like, loading up a LFO sample, right? There's no internal BPM on here. There's just, like, an LFO at 120 <laughs> BPM that's a sample in a folder on your assimilator, which is just like, it's interesting, right? Uh, at least I think it's interesting. So there's eight channels and four inputs on each channel. There is eight gates, which I have pre-patched in to save us all some sanity. Uh, but then there is three inputs of CV. There's 1A, 2B, uh, 9S, or 1C. And... Uh, that's the same for all of the channels. And then you can independently break the master outputs with eight outputs there, which I think, like, uh, that would be cool to, like, there's more, you can do onboard mixing, but there's more ease and power, I think, when you have uh, a Eurac mixer and break all those things up. But, like I said, there's, like, limitless things you can do with the assimilator, right? So... Uh, that's those. There is these uh, gate. And you know what I think? Let's just bring in a little audio so you can hear it. Uh, there's these channel selectors. And you'll see. Uh, they're used both in like manual triggers, obviously, but also there's uh do in different views if you go in the channel view you can select them this way now they do play and there's a way to disable that in the manual if that's something you want to do for today i am not going to do that so uh, we've been over the control inputs then there's the screen obviously i'll say quick on the screen it's not the it's not the best i don't know how to explain like i wish i knew more specific screen terms but like it's not super crisp i wish it was bigger i wish it was crisper it feels like this is a huge module with like you know and i think the assimilator has been out for a minute too so like yeah it, it it's all right it does the job it's kind of small but i think i know um if you saw that interview with the alm maker uh forgive me i forgot his name um he was talking about when he made the squid that he really they originally didn't want to use a screen at all and then they kind of uh capitulated and ended up adding the small screen they could which uh consider that like uh or think about what you like in your workflow because for me i love the screens and i <laughs> wish the squid had the biggest screen possible and i wish the assimilator used all of this extra margin to <laughs> fill with more screen space because i like that um but yeah, uh, if you share the ALM sentiment that the screen should be minimal and you want to have like a screenless experience in a sampler, then uh, yeah, the, the screen's kind of small. What I was going to say is on the squid sample, I'm going to make lots of comparisons today because they're both eight channel <laughs> samplers um, and I have experience with the squid. Squid, if you're visually impaired or you have 
if you are at a point where you wear glasses and you don't want to wear them while you're making your rack, if you're at like that kind of spot, like I think you're going to have issues on the squid, but, uh, it's not so bad on the assimilator. Obviously that's not like a, a super detailed comparison, but just like, just know that like, I wish this one was bigger, but the squid is like really small. <laughs> um, yeah. And this one, it's not super crisp. Uh, it's there. Anyway, I have a lot of thoughts on screens, <laughs> apparently. Uh, people always say they hate menu diving, and, like, I don't mind menu diving. What I hate is button combos. Like, menus, you can scroll through and find what you want, but button combos, if you don't remember them, you're SOL, right? Like, you <laughs> you know what I mean? I know you can get the manual, but, like, to me, pulling the manual up is more of a chore than scrolling through a menu. Now remembering everything on the assimilator <laughs> all of the menus might be kind of challenging but there's also you know the balance there's tons of power here anyway i'm getting sidetracked again there's so much to say with the assimilator there's so much to cover uh it's going to be a big one folks so yeah we went over the screen let's get back to talking about the other stuff so we've been over the screen we've been over the cv the gate inputs the audio inputs the channel outputs uh, there is two knobs. There's sort of this big data one knob, they call it. So this uh, main fu functions like on the main screen is you can swap between presets this way. Uh, there's other screens. If you load, it'll be that one. But then if you're doing something like changing the channels, then you want to use... Let's say we want to change the sample, so we select it with the big knob, and then the little knob you can change values is usually what it's going to be doing. So I'm going to select that one, and now we have a different sample. And I just point that out to say that like that's kind of the workflow of the assimilator. Big knob is like the menu navigator, and then the data two knob is the value changer. So that's the screen, that's the knobs. Then there's buttons. So the first one is sort of like the project. Now, I'm going to screw up some semantics here, but I'm going to try and make it as like educational as possible. So uh, I'm going to point out that I don't think they use the term projects. They use the term folders, they use the term presets, and they use the term channels. So this will go over folders, which I don't like the name of because you can have folders within folders for the sake of file purposes and these are projects in my mind oh, so folders are should be projects but i'm going to refer to them as folders going forward because it's really important to get this right because it gets really confusing if you get it wrong so we are going to load a new folder and a folder contains all your samples and it's set up so the presets that this comes with are files and folders so what you'll see some of these if we go to like the claps folder we're going to load it and you'll see in this uh if you'll see in this view there's an option to save my current preset here because i made changes to it by changing that sample that i'm going to lose if i load another one now i don't care about that i'm going to load it it loads now to that point about the weird kind of structuring around assimilator I have a preset here, and there's multiple presets within a folder usually. I mean, there's none out of the box, obviously, but in the provided stuff that comes on the SD card, we have four presets within that folder. Now, given that it's a folder, we have a whole preset of claps. And when I first got it, I made a drum sequence. I'm running through all the presets. It's kind of weird to me to think that you'd want... Why would you want... Eight channels of clap, right? Like, maybe the, the assimilator is your clap module in a greater drum system? I don't know. It just, that, see, that kind of makes the structure confusing to me. Because I look at, like, the folder that we're in right now, like a file management folder, and think, okay, here's a big endless bank of samples where I can grab claps and clicks in this situation, but you can't, right? You have to choose one or the other. Now, you can import them, and that's a really important distinction to make. Uh, but if I want to take, say, a DivKid drone from 
that other folder and import it to the claps that I have loaded, it doesn't do that out of the box. So I found this was really confusing, and I think it's important to demo quick before we finish with the panel. I'm going to get derailed a lot today. I'm sorry. It is called rambling about. So <laughs> I click on the channel view. You can see a list of all these claps, and I'm thinking, okay, as an example, I don't want all channels to be claps. So I hit load and load folder. Now what I said before about folders being your projects, right? You can't go in here and just select from any folder. So you have to import it to the current folder that you have. So because we're in the claps and we want to take something from say the uh, Richard Devine single shots. So I hit this and it's going to give me options to load that entire project, which is not what we want to do. We want to double tap load to enter that. Now you see a message across the top of the screen that says load to preset 001. We're importing a sample from another folder into our current folder. So let's do that. We're going to load and advance. We're just going to grab two of these for fun. Maybe three. Sure. Okay. Now Let's go back to channels and you'll see that I've imported some of these here. So now we have not all claps, right? I just, I thought it was important to make that or to go over that quick because that is a lot of the assimilator workflow in a nutshell. Um, let's get back to going through the buttons. So uh, that's load out of the box. It loads the folders, but because I've done some importing of files, hitting it is going to do <laughs> that same thing where it's going to go back to or give me the option to import some files. We don't want to do that. Let's get out of here. If you press it again, it'll do the initial function, which is loading the folder. Get out of that. I'm going to hit channels just to get out of that and then get back to where my main view. Uh, you'll see the warning sign flashing. That means I made changes to this folder that haven't been saved. If I wanted to save them, I would hit save. Uh, preset contains imported samples. I don't want to actually save this. I'm just showing you where the save button is. Now, <laughs> let's get out of here. Uh, there is utility. This is like your settings menu. I don't love how they've named everything. I, I hate to come across really whiny, but like your rack stuff, I just find like the naming always gets really confusing. So utilities, yeah, I mean, this is your settings. This is other stuff, but uh, what it includes here that I think is really important and it was also an issue when I was trying to learn this module is the there's what I think uh, where I expect the <laughs> new project to be projects being folders on the simulator uh, under utilities there's a new folder option right because I think and you will probably make folders that you want to use every time but when you're new to the module you will want to make an empty folder so yeah, a new project, an empty project for you to fill with your samples and start mangling and do what off. Uh, that's where that is. Uh, lots of utility setting stuff in there. Now, that's the one. Channels, we went through a bit. Uh, I hit channels, it gives you the settings here over each of them. Uh, we'll get back out of there into the main view. This one has the waveform view in it, if you're wondering, it'll show you that. I really like that. It's, it's, it's just nice. <laughs> um, yeah, then the sampling in controls are here. I won't hit it. I haven't done it yet, so we're going to do it together in a bit. Uh, but yeah, there's the setup here. So yeah, uh, gives you monitoring in. There's choices over uh, how blown out you can let it be. There's like a limiting option and whatnot. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, there is zones. So zones are like mute groups in a way. If you don't agree with my <laughs> uh, definition of that, let me know. But zones lets you group samples and you can layer samples too. And this is where I kind of find the stereo part of it confusing and maybe I'm just an idiot. Uh, and if you think so, please let me know in the comments. But uh, like there's so much power to be had in zones that why does a stereo sample take up two channels, right? Anyway, maybe there's some phase modulation stuff to that, that this makes sense, but I don't get it. So in the channels, now this is like the per channel settings in this row of buttons. So we have our pitch and there's CV assignment in here. Uh, you'll see right now we are not pitching up. 
other thing here, you'll see we are selecting the first sample. Uh, you can select other samples by hitting them. They do play. There's a way to fix that. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm not, or I haven't tried to figure it out yet. We're just going to let them play for the sake of this video. But yeah, so right now the first one, I can pitch up our sample a bit. Uh, or I can assign it to CV. So CVA, CVB, uh, 1A. Uh, yeah, the, the funny thing about this matrix, right, is like there's three per row, but it doesn't matter. It lets you do anything. Uh, I know I've said a lot of like nitpicky critical things about this, but I can't understate how powerful it is, right? Like it's like this is the big kahuna, all right? You want to make a counter for how many times I say that? But like, yeah, uh, there's a matrix here of what, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 CV inputs. And you could have... Uh, one sample, 24 CV inputs assigned to it. I don't know if there's enough destinations for that, but like you can do <laughs> so much with this, right? Uh, yeah, so that's pitch. There's exponential FM too, linear FM. Like a simulator could be your entire Euro rack. It could be your sample. It could be, it has its envelope. It has, like there's no analog filters on here, obviously, but like it's as depth as, it's as deep as it gets level there's mixing on board so i'm freaking exploding everything hitting it so what marius suggested to me was to assign our cv with a module with faders to control the levels that way so i may do that in the demo we might not get there we're already at 25 minutes <laughs> uh but yeah that's a really cool way to both mute and unmute and do lots of fun stuff with the CV over the mix. So there's also exponential amplitude modulation. Everything. Everything could be done on the assimilator. I can't think of like a more powerful module in your rack. If you can think of one, let me know. Uh, then phase mod. We're not going to go over phase mod today. I think <laughs> that was really optimistic. But you can do phasing of the s sources in stereo uh you can do it over cv you can control with an lfo you can mangle the hell out of everything so that's phase mod mutate uh there's bit depth reduction it sounds really good aliasing like i said there's like insane amounts of quality in the sampling and they really give you lots of control over destroying it with bit reduction and aliasing control which is not something i've really seen uh there's smoothing there's control over midi there's a reverse option here too which is cool i wish there was a way to control that over cv and if there is let me know but i don't think there is it'd be cool to like change the direction of the playback over cv uh just like i said there's so much depth to everything and here i am asking for more and then mix, uh, there's pan, this can be controlled over CV too, uh, mix output level, there's monitoring, buses and everything. It's insanely deep, we're not going to get into that today. But no, it's there. If you want this to be your entire world in the studio, Rossum could surely be it. And I know I've made some complaints about uh, the semantics of things right now, but I really want to point out that like, like it's as deep as it gets. Then there's your sample controls of your editing stuff. So. I'm going to get into start here. You'll see our waveform. And I think this is sort of like the bread and butter, I guess, of hardware samplers is like, how easy is this stuff to chop? And do you care? Because this is where I'm like, I, the bigger the screen, the better, because this stuff can be a little, you know, finicky on a really small screen, especially on the squid. So, if the workflow of the mangling on board is important to you, consider how it works here. So what we want to do, uh, if you've ever used MPCs, you know uh, the insanely long numbers are how things go. So the big knob will do small changes, fine changes, and the small one will do uh course changes i guess so there's a big overview and then a smaller view to get in fine details which is much appreciated because the screen's kind of small and yeah so now we've changed things up i am editing the fourth channel yeah we made it different so <laughs> 
uh, I'll stop editing the beginning. That's the end. We don't need to change the end. Now you can modulate the start, which is very, very cool. Um, I know some people just love to like load up really glitchy loops and then modulate the starts and do like send them thousands of triggers, just get bleepy bloopy syncussion, but digital like stuff like that. It's all in here, I promise. Uh, <laughs> you can modulate the end as well. Uh, usually in that example I just gave, you probably cut it off by using one shots and just sending in a new one, but it's in there. Uh, I don't know if there's slicing, and I don't know if you'd, well, I'm not a slice user, not the service side. Like, uh, I know if you're coming from an MPC workflow and you take one sample and slice it into a drum kit from that, I prefer to split up all my samples beforehand or have them on separate channels and stuff. I don't think there's any of that slicing workflow in here, which I don't care for anyway. So there's no slicing, like I said, on board, but this loop mode is a similar idea in that it lets you loop a section from within a sample, which depending on your play mode, it can make a portion of your sample be the start length and it can be layered in certain ways. It's way too deep for what I'm just trying to do in my little rambling about video today. But if that is something that's important to you and something that you're interested in, do check this out because yeah, it's, it's deep and it's insanely powerful. Have I said it's deep? Have I said it's insanely powerful yet? Well, I'm saying it again. We've gone over the panel. We went over the folder structure, which I hopefully was able to clear up some confusions I had with it. What we want to do now is load a folder. And I think what most people are gonna wanna do is create their own presets from their own samples, either by sampling in with the input or importing them in with the SD card like I have done. So, what I'm going to do is load a folder that I made on a desktop PC. So we wanna load folder and it's empty out of the box. And you'll see, uh, I can't, so there's another quick thing that confused me when I did it before, I'm sorry. Uh, you can scroll through empty slots. It doesn't let you out of the box by default, but if you hold down the encoder, you can go through all 99 slots, even if they're empty. And I think this is just like, if you're doing live performance, they want you to, or they want to prevent you loading <laughs> empty slots. So just something that if you uh, want to use a funny number or something, I don't know. If you want to like, get to the empty slot when they're all full and start a new preset that's another way to do it so if you had like a folder for all of your work on the assimilator if that's the workflow you'd like to use uh, you could always come in here and every new project quote unquote project every new uh what they call preset right if you want an empty one hold down the encoder go to empty now all of mine are empty on here so it doesn't matter and we're going to start with the first one so what we want to do is go to channels and we want to load up this one. So select sample. You'll see now these are all samples from within the folder. And the folder that I selected for this one is all out of a bank that I purchased. And I want to say it's called Shaman Samples. Uh, okay, so we're going to load up some samples. So, okay, that's a funny sounding kick. <laughs> Here's the workflow. You know what? For the sake of demonstrating the workflow, Here's what I like to do. First channel always kicks. I like that. See that what I mentioned before about how it's going to take up two channels in that way. I find this confusing and I'm not really sure how to convert it to mono because I know there's a way. But yeah, if you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, go down to channel three. Uh, this clap will be good enough. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I changed this away from the kick, didn't I? Piercer kicker. Cool. Uh, fifth channel. Hatter. And then. This is, let's get into another one. Symbol, sure. So, symbol. Hat. Yeah, 
yeah, so that's how you do them. Now we will save this. Part of the workflow of the simulator tells you stuff at the top and that's uh, sort of like scoreboard scribe by thing. So hold down, saving two seconds. Saved. All right, we saved preset. Sequencer, which is dying. Would be kind of sim silly to not show the sampling workflow, so I'm going to try and do it here. Uh, this isn't plugged into the assimilator in any way right now, uh, but the sample I'm going to try and record here is from the Endorphins Black Noir. Sounds like this. Just to show you, so we're going to patch that into, it's in stereo, so we're going to patch that into our assimilator, left in the left, right in the right, to take the output and then put it back into my recording rig. So now we're going to go into sampling setup. And then, so you can see my levels coming in a uh, little hot. Maybe let's just, that's our threshold. We want input level is just a little too high. Stereo channels aren't exactly even, and I think that's okay. I think that's what gives it some of its stereo field on the output side, so yeah. And the way we arm this is holding this. So now it's going. And this is at 106 BPM. I'm just going to let it run for a while. It's like the shortest loop in the world, so we're going to hit stop. It's going to save our recorded sample. And I don't want to erase it. I don't know if that's like from the preview window, but now our channels. And then in channel 7, you see our new sample is there in stereo. <laughs> Switch it to one shot mode for now, so it'll loop. Yeah. So how can we mangle that? Let's play it again. Mario's recommended pitching it down. Let's hear how pitching it down sounds. deep does this go? Whoa, okay. I'm scared. This is going to be like crazy demonic. <clears throat> it's like too deep to hear. It's crazy. It'll let you pitch it down so far, it almost sounds granular because you hear like every piece of audio. Okay, I hear what he's saying.
Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> he was right. Listen to this. If I put a new anyway, I found out to send it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there's an internal one though. FM sources. Let's go. Like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, that, like, you could never scratch the surface of what this can do, right? Like, it's an absolute powerhouse. gonna sound really weird but i want to do one to demo it so yeah there's <laughs> this you wouldn't think of this in like a loop right but if it was a you know what, just for let's let's make this an oscillator right so we go to uh our pitch we are on sample seven we just want to make this like stupidly high pitched you can pretend it's an oscillator <laughs> And then we'll go to envelope. I know it's the weirdest oscillator you've ever heard. <coughs> it's the weirdest oscillator you've ever heard, but we go to envelope and we'll go to release and then we'll make it short. So pretend that's a chord stab. All right, just control over envelope here, which is super appreciated. Give some attack. One shot. Yeah. If this power appeals to you, then what could beat that, really? Okay, final thoughts. It's an absolute beast. It's insanely powerful. This could be damn near your entire rack in one module, right? And usually when I say that, I say that in a negative way. I think of, like, modules that I didn't mesh with that try and be, like, uh, everything in one difficult-to-use painful package everything here works in a reasonable way which is actually really impressive given how powerful it is because usually things that are this powerful are really annoying to use and the assimilator isn't uh i can definitely see this as something that like it's worth putting your time into for sure because it can do everything and it's insanely powerful if i haven't said that a million times yet i'm saying it a million and one time uh hopefully i was able to give you some idea of if that workflow meshes with you and how that workflow looks like and you know the things to expect from this thing it's also i gotta say it's a lot of money uh i think you could buy two squid samples new and have money left over if i've not mistaken uh there is significantly more power here uh both in the stereo realm and with cv inputs and sampling ability and there is a midi expander for this one for which there is not one for the squid sample uh something to consider if you're comparing the two uh there's exponentially more patch points here and more control uh but there's also simplicity on the squid that you might value more uh, or you might find it really annoying and limiting. Uh, if you like to CV control everything, which uh, I didn't think I cared too much for before, but now mangling CV on this thing, I'm thinking like, it's going to be really difficult to go back to the squid and I only have three inputs, to be honest. They have lots of fancy routing on that one too, but it's just to say that like, uh, the simulator is objectively an amazing module and I hope to give you an idea of what its workflow is like and if that workflow is worth paying that cost for you if you're considering picking up your rack sample module uh yeah i think it's great i'm tofoni thanks for watching sorry this is a long one uh take care i'll talk to you soon see ya